If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We've drawn a preliminary picture of a box whose top is open. Notice that is stated in the question, so we've shown the top of the box without any material on it. And it also is going to end up having a square base. And what that means is if you look at the dimensions of the base, we're actually going to have a square. And so, of course, the two sides of a square have equal lengths. And therefore, we can label one side of the square base x and the other side of the square base will also be x. So again, notice that we're using the same variable for both sides because it is a square base. On the other hand, we don't know whether the height has the same dimensions as the two sides of the base, and therefore we would want to use a different variable. We can use y to represent the height of this box. Now, when solving any optimization problem, after drawing your picture, the next thing you want to do is you want to come up with what they call a constraint equation. And basically, the constraint equation is going to be based on the number that is given to you in the problem. So in this case, we are told that there are only 1,200 centimeters squared of material that is available to make this box. Now, you'll notice that the unit of that is centimeters squared. And the fact that it's given in centimeters squared is a clue that that number pertains to the surface area. If it had been centimeters cubed, then that would have represented volume. But any unit that has a square on it represents an area, and in this case, the surface area. So basically what it's telling us is that the surface area, which we might just call S, must equal 1,200 centimeters squared. So we want to look back at our picture and come up with an expression for the surface area. We actually have five sides to the box. We have the base representing one side, and then we have the front of the box, the two sides, this side and then this side here, and then the back of the box. So the picture is getting a little bit cluttered, but overall there are five sides to the box. Let's start with the base. The area of the base would be the area of this square. So that would just be x times x, which of course gives me x squared. So we can begin to write out the surface area of the box as x squared, and that's going to represent the base. The front area of the box would be the length, which is x, times the height of it, which we denoted as y. So the front would have an area of xy. Notice the back side of the box would also have the same dimensions. It's a little tricky to see in this three-dimensional picture, but the length of the back side is x, and then the height of the back side is y. So in fact, since the back side also has an area of xy, we're going to end up with 2xy, as you will see in just a moment. Then you have the right side whose area is also x times y, and then the left side has an area of x times y. So there would be two more xy's here, and those would represent the right and left sides. So that one's for the right, that one's for the left. That does give us our five sides. This is all set equal to 1200, as noted above. Let's condense this into a much simpler expression. We have x squared plus 4xy and this will be set equal to 1200. And this is what we call the constraint equation. Now, after getting the constraint equation, your next goal is to determine the objective equation. And that's going to be based on whether you're trying to minimize or maximize a certain quantity. In this case, we're looking for the largest possible volume. So that is our objective, is to make the volume as large as possible. Therefore, we're going to write out a volume equation. And you may recall that the volume of a three-dimensional box is length times width times height. So you would have length times width times height, x times x times y, which of course we can condense into x squared y. So we have our picture, our constraint, our objective. Next, what you need to do is you want to go back to your constraint equation, and you want to solve that usually for y, just to keep things consistent. You can try to solve it for x. In this case, that would be very difficult. But usually, I like to just solve for y to keep things consistent. 
So let's actually make some room so that we can solve our constraint equation for y. And to do that, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. So that would give me 4xy is equal to 1200 minus x squared. And then to solve for y, I'll divide each term by 4x, like so. Make some space here. So we're going to have y is equal. Now, 1200 divided by 4, of course, is 300. This will still be over x. Notice that x is still in the denominator of the fraction. And then over here, we can actually reduce. We can cancel a factor of x in the denominator with a factor of x in the numerator. So that's going to give us x over 4. I would prefer to write that as 1 fourth x. So we've solved the constraint for y. We will now go ahead and plug that in to our objective. So now we have volume is equal to x squared multiplied by 300 over x minus 1 fourth x. So this is nice. We have our objective equation in terms of a single variable x. We will next simplify this equation. So we're going to distribute the x squared. So you'll end up with 300x squared over x minus 1 fourth x cubed. We could simplify this further. A factor of x will cancel here in the denominator and in the numerator. So now we have 300x minus 1 fourth x cubed. Now that you have your objective simplified and in terms of a single variable, you would want to compute its derivative. This is the next step in any optimization problem. So we can denote the derivative as v prime. Of course, the derivative of 300x is 300. And then over here, we have to use the power rule. So we'll pull that power down and multiply to give us 3 fourths x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent to make it x squared. So to maximize the volume, we would set the derivative equal to 0. This is going to allow us to find the so-called critical numbers. So why don't we add 3 fourths x squared to both sides here? So now we will have 300 is equal to 3 fourths x squared. We could then multiply both sides of this equation by 4 thirds, which is the reciprocal of 3 fourths. The reason that works, of course, is because you'll have 12 in the numerator and 12 in the denominator, and 12 divided by 12 is just 1. So you're left with 1x squared, or just x squared. And then over here we have 400. Finally, take the square root on both sides, and you will get an x value equal to 20. Now, we may, depending on our professor's requirements, have to prove that this actually does maximize the volume. And so one way of proving or showing that this value of x maximizes the volume is to use the second derivative test. So basically, with the second derivative test, you're going to take your derivative, which we obtained here. Why don't we copy and paste that below? And then you're going to want to compute the second derivative. So this becomes v double prime. The derivative of 300 is 0. And then we pull this power down, we end up with negative 6 fourths x. Now notice if you plug in this x value, so we're going to do v double prime of 20, you would get negative 6 fourths times 20. Notice the actual value doesn't matter. What all, the only thing that matters is that it comes out to be a negative number. It's actually going to be negative 30. But the fact that it's negative on the second derivative actually shows us that the curve is concave down. So very crudely speaking, when x is equal to 20, then our curve at that location is concave down, and that shows that there is indeed a max right there. So now that we've shown that x equals 20 maximizes the volume, we just have to go back up and make sure we answer the question. It wants us to find the largest possible volume. So we actually have to figure out the volume. But that's relatively easy because the volume equation, which is in its most simplified form right here, that can be used to compute the volume by plugging in our x value. So we're going to take 20. We might as well calculate it right here. So v of 20 will equal 300 times 20 minus 1 fourth times 20 
cubed, and hopefully your professor would allow you to use a calculator here. And if you plug this all in, you end up with a volume of 4,000. So this would represent the maximum possible volume. And in terms of the unit, since the measurements were in terms of centimeters, then our volume would come out to centimeters cubed. Notice we use a cube on the centimeters because this is a volume problem.